I think a common misconception is that a lot of what I'm known for, for teaching in a way that's funny or entertaining, is what makes it good. But it isn't. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that most people get it entirely wrong. And since launching Webflow University back in 2017, we've seen Insert Software Here Academy and whatever university with a lot of superficial similarities, and I have no problem with the copying aspect. If there are good things to steal from what we've done over the last years, that just makes things better, that's good. My problem is people are almost entirely copying the wrong thing. I'm gonna cover the big five that I use, and that's structure, humor, visuals, music, and hairstyling, which I think have all, in one way or another, contributed to creating what many consider some of the best teaching in software. Let's start with structure. You can literally kill the other four. If you have structure, you can teach anything. And this works for simple stuff, like following a cooking recipe, but it's extraordinarily helpful for complex stuff. For structure, I often like to start with a big, bold statement. Literally, tell them what you're going to teach. In this video, I started by saying, I think a common misconception is that a lot of what I'm known for, for teaching in a way that's funny or entertaining, is what makes it good. And that sets the stage immediately. It's not explicit. It doesn't say, I'm gonna teach how I teach. But the implication is clear. There is a misconception, funny and entertaining equals good teaching. So what are you going to learn? What makes good teaching? If I was teaching calendar blocking, I might say calendar blocking can take an otherwise messy and inconsistent schedule and instead make each day clear and focused. So what are you going to learn? All about calendar blocking. If I was teaching how to make beef wellington, I'd say Gordon Ramsay calls the beef wellington a showstopper. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to pull it off. So what are you going to learn? How to make beef wellington. So that's the thesis. All you have to do for the rest of it, for the rest of the structure, is break down that thesis into discrete chunks. In this video, we did that. We said structure, humor, visuals, music, hair stuff. It's not comprehensive, it rarely is, but it's the main subjects, or in some cases, the main steps involved with doing something. These are five subjects in this video, and they are in a particular order, which if you don't get it yet, it will become obvious in a minute. I almost always cover these subjects or these chapters in the first 30 seconds or so because they give whoever's learning a clear understanding of the milestones they'll hit, the major shape of the lesson. So, structure. Tell them what you're going to teach and then break those steps down in the order that you told them. That structure is like 75% of the equation. Now, this is a really important note. You can't forget this. Always at the end, Tell them what they learned. Tell them what was covered. Tell them what you'll teach. You'll teach it, and then you'll tell them what they've learned. The chapters or the subjects or the steps, whatever you want to call it, the structure does most of the work. And if that's structure, what about humor? I think this is the most misunderstood part of the way I teach. Humor can be heavily distracting or cringeworthy. And this is coming from someone who has optimistically a 40% success rate when it comes to humor. Many of my friends would say less than 20. But for me, one way I found to not be terribly distracting, especially if I feel like I wanna say something funny, is to not laugh at it. And I've always sort of felt that laughing at your own joke, at least in this context, it's, it's robbing the audience or the person you're talking to. It's taking something away from them because just like a laugh track on a sitcom, it tells the audience when something's funny. Now, if you know me in real life, you know there are times I completely lose it and I can't even stand up because I'm laughing so hard. But there's something to be said about not distracting a learner with a joke. I don't mean don't add humor. I mean, if you do say something funny or peculiar, maybe don't create an expectation or a pause that messes with those who wanna keep going, or for those who might not get what's funny about something, or those who are just annoyed by it. But the biggest thing about humor is it only leads to good teaching if there's good teaching. Humor can add levity and fun and something different, it's great. But if you try to add humor on top of not good teaching, humor then becomes a bad thing. Humor can be good in small doses, if it fits your personality, but consider not telling the audience how to feel. Okay, what about visuals? Well, if you've ever been in a classroom where a teacher or a professor has this slide up, this is the worst, we've all seen this, and that teacher is literally just reading every word on the slide. 
What is the value of that? I think the best visuals in the history of time are not hyper complex. They're not heavily branded assets. They're simple, clear, visual representations that reinforce, that's the key word, they don't distract, they reinforce whatever's being said. And if you want a crash course on great visuals, watch the Macworld and the WWDC keynotes from 2001, 2002. Just one or two words or a short sentence, that's it. Slides or visuals, they shouldn't distract, they should reinforce. That's visuals. What about music? So everyone's style is different. I grew up with John Williams and films in the 80s and 90s. I love an orchestral score. So anytime I can get up to record with a group and keep the music as organic as possible, I will jump at that opportunity. But it's kind of whatever works for you and your brand. And that may mean no music. My only note on music, and keep in mind, uh, with my startup, I'm going very deep on music and I'll be documenting a lot of this. Uh, but my only note would be, if you remove the music and the teaching isn't good, the music isn't gonna save you. Just like humor, the teaching must be good. Music is just an enhancer. It's not an excuse for lazy teaching. That's music. Finally, hairstyling, because I think there's an excellent point to be made. Hair, I think, has absolutely nothing to do with teaching. But for Yvonne, this is my hair without product, and I always change what I'm using. I've used Crew Fiber, uh, something from Walmart called Got To Be Glued. I think I've used Kevin Murphy Rough Rider, and now I'm using something sold at Fleischmann here in New York, which is where I got my last haircut. The key isn't the product. If you have medium length, straight or wavy hair like me, and you want the obscene Jimmy Neutron quality of volume, it's all about using a hair dryer. But here's my point. And the point of this list, every subject I've been covering overall. The subjects in this video, I did not cover them at random. I covered them in descending order of priority. Great teaching can just be structured, clear teaching. If you can pull off a little humor or make it your own, great. Visuals are not always needed. And I'll show you engagement and retention data that shows as long as you're engaging the audience, it can be just your face or a screen recording. Music is a nice to have and whether you have a lot of hair or no hair or facial hair or whatever, it entirely does not matter. My point though is this, if you're gonna copy the way I teach, start with the first one. Start with great structure. Make sure your structure and the core teaching is perfect and then add some of the rest and make it your own. Now, this is part one of how I teach. For part two, which I'll make soon, I wanna know from you. What do you wanna know about teaching this way? Questions about scripting, teleprompter technology, editing, let me know. But for now, that's how I teach part one.